Hey guys, today we are going to talk about spikes, but in terms of why are they happening now when it already was known that the legendary, that planeswalkers would be legendary creatures, therefore you could have multiple of them at the same time. So if you go back a few months ago, the whole Ixlan sheet of mythics and rares were spoiled. And they were spoiled online, everyone had information to the same Everyone had the same public information. They could have made the decisions like by to say by the Cloud Keeper at that point in time, but they did not. They waited for the official card to be spoiled. And yes, Jace was a legendary, therefore it meant you could have multiple Jaces on the field at the same time. So cards that focus on legendary, such as the Cloud Keeper, which gives you some generic manner to pay, play legendary cards have gone up a ton in price. Now the question is, why now? And I feel like there was still some doubt if someone really could take the entire foil sheet of mythics and rares with them, right? I mean, it was 99% certain that was actually the case, but until Wizard of the Coast went openly and made it, this is what happened in the article, People might have said, oh, well, maybe it wasn't Legendary Days, Jace. Maybe we read it wrong. Now, had there been a better quality of on the Jace? Remember, the Jace was still unknown, but people said, hey, I, I think I'm seeing Legendary. Maybe the, these cards spike way beforehand, but because there was this unknown still, they didn't spike until recently. A lot of these cards are recent. Um, this card from McKady Mask is... Just a simple buyout. It's kind of a Narwhal buyout. It's no good. It's a pirate. It's That's why. Corpse Dance is a card I vaguely remember in Tempest. I did play a ton in Tempest and Mirage in that era. And it was always, I always felt it was a common. I always felt like it was a common card. I was like, oh, cool, common. Because Capsize was a common. And you kind of felt like a Capsize to me. But for creatures in your graveyard. Very interesting card. Since that time, it has seen multiple spikes and most recently is $28. What makes it kind of unique? It is a rare on the reserve list. I don't need to go into too much detail about reserve list rares just spiking for no reason. It's at this point, if you watch the channel at all, you just know it is something that happens something that we will we talk about and then we move on to because it's like every other card. Now, Corpse Dance is actually not a bad card. Um, it's actually not bad. The next card we're going to talk about is quite bad. It is Shauku and Bringer, and she costs five and double black. Flying Legend, uh, it ent cannot attack if there's another creature in play. During your upkeep, lose free life, which actually is not bad. Remove target creature from the game, put a plus one, plus one counter on her. Great name, very crazy art, reminds me of uh, the Corpse Bride. But 5-5 uh, five, five flyer who cannot attack and you lose free life each turn. And ed that's not bad, 7 is a lot, but you do get to remove creatures from the game. So not to your graveyard, Avatar of Woe is to your graveyard. This one is... One of the other cards that I would really look into is life loss cards. It used to be a lot more devastating when you had 20 life, but now if you have 40 life, some of these cards are now playable uh, because free life is less than 10% of your life total. But if you only had an EDH with 40 life, but if you had only 20 life, that is 15% of your life total each turn. Now, Wood Elemental continues its spike upward. Uh, again, this is something that no one expected to be very good. Uh, the reason we don't expect it to be very good is it has power lo lower right hand corner or set to number of untapped forest use sacrifice when it comes into play. So let's assume you have four forest and you play this in turn four you can sacrifice all four of your forests to get a 4-4. Four, four. Does that sound good to anyone? Like you're sacrificing your entire land base to get, and you're banking it on a 4-4 four, four 
which can be quite easily, I mean, yeah, it's out of lightning bolt range, but pretty much that's it. Diamond Valley, uh, this card has continued its spike. I will say that I don't particularly like Diamond Valley. And when I played it during Arabian Nights, um, there's two cards that jump out. Uh, Alley of Cairo and then Jeweled Bird. Or Yeah, those two were considered very good. Diamond Valley was always like, okay, this is a utility land. Um, you, you tap it to sacrifice one of your creatures in exchange for a number of life equal to its toughness. Now, it's good for a sacrifice outlet, and it's good for a little bit of life gain, but it does not produce any mana. It's a problem. Um, it's a problem because today's land, they produce mana and then also have effect, so you're not, you will lose tempo. You're going to lose tempo. So if your opponent is making their land drops and then you land drop this, you actually lost a little bit of tempo, which in some decks is very bad. All right, let's talk about Reki, the history of Kamigawa. Uh, this is an interesting card from Saviors. I probably have a few copies of this. I did Saviors Wars, one of my favorite sets because of all the Kinrins, and actually my MTG Salvation name, I haven't logged on forever, but I used to be a moderator, was Kinrin because I loved the champ Saviors of Kamigawa set so much. The card is $14. Again, it comes back to the fact, why did none of these spike before? So we knew that legend Planeswalkers would become legendary. Uh, we knew from the cards that were unofficially spoiled. But I guess, um, my, my guess is people didn't really believe it to be the case uh, until they actually saw the card, uh, until they actually saw Jace. And it's not just Jace, right? Gideon's going to benefit... All of these other cards are going to benefit. Uh, next, Patron Wizard. It is very clear why this card is an old card. It's a good card for Wizards. One of the biggest problems uh, is that Wizards is... There's not enough of them to make this card viable in Odyssey. It itself was not bad, but you needed to stack a ton of them. So if your entire deck is a bunch of Wizards, it's going to make it incredibly annoying to play. So let's um, assume that you can board wipe, you can do specific removal. That's just not going to work. Uh, one of the things that I don't like about this new, I don't like playing against this new wizard deck is you always have to calculate that this counter spells in play. And you have to be like, hmm. So dropping a ton of wizards can efficiently make sure that every, one spell a turn is countered. Which sucks. But that's exactly what a counterspell deck can do with that card. Uh, lastly, let's talk uh, a little bit about Gideon. Gideon Trials is probably the most, ben it benefited most. Uh, it, because it's very clear, you need multiple Gideons because it's harder to kill one Gideon, or harder to kill two Gideons than it is to kill one Gideon. And now that you can have several Gideons on the field, it makes this card very viable, more viable in modern than it previously was. But I don't. I like it. I think it's great. And one other card I would look at is Gideon Ally of Zendikar. That is an interesting one, especially after rotation. Remember, it was one of the most dominant cards in Standard. Now that doesn't mean it's going to do well in modern. It has not shown that it will do well in modern. But in a Gideon deck, you're going to need that Gideon, and that Gideon should be relatively cheap soon. Anyway, that is it. Let me know. Bye, guys.